So now in this video, we're going to look at voltages again. This time we're going to look at the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So there's a couple uh, voltages that we're primarily interested in. There's the voltage of the base to emitter, and uh, that'll be VBE. That is how we control how well it conducts from collector to emitter. So there will also be a voltage from collector to emitter that we are interested in. Here is the pin layout for the 2N3904, which is the NPN bipolar junction transistor I'm going to use in this video. Any NPN bipolar junction transistor should work just fine, but it may have a different pin layout. So you can see looking at the flat side, the uh, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. I find that to be the case if it's a bipolar junction transistor, and it starts with 2N. So now we zoom in closer to uh, the schematic here. So we got the transistor, that is the emitter, which we saw was the left pin, now it's the bottom pin, middle pin, the base goes to that resistor, and then the top pin, the collector goes up there. And this is just a simple LED circuit, right there, short lead, the cathode goes to the collector, the top pin, long lead the anode to a one kilo ohm resistor, 1000 ohm resistor, that'll let me raise the voltage to about 12 volts, no problem. So that base, right there, the middle pin of the transistor, comes to this resistor, which goes to the middle of this trim pot here. So this is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, seems to work pretty good with uh, the base of bipolar junction transistors. So I generally almost always use 10 kilo ohms right there and 10 kilo ohm trim pot because that's what I have. It's to the positive supply and to the negative supply. So now we're gonna start with five volts here. That's a uh, common voltage that I work with. I have the oscilloscope. I have the alligator clips there. They're clipped to jumpers. So I can just move the jumpers to get my readings. And uh, we're gonna zoom in. First voltage, we're gonna look at, it's gonna be in relationship to ground, that's where the emitter is plugged in, the bottom there, we're gonna go to the uh, base of the transistor. So the LED is off, and uh, my lamp's at its lowest setting, so we should uh, probably be all right. So right now we're looking at base to emitter, the trim pot is set all the way to the negative rail. So it's not a surprise that uh, there's no voltage there. So I'm gonna slowly turn this up a little bit. You can see the voltage rising. So one thing you're gonna notice, it's one square per division, that all of a sudden it stops at uh, probably 0.7 volts. And in any case, I can keep raising this. I have a current limiting resistor there, and uh, we have a diode drop there. So we have that diode drop. That's where we're measuring across right now, the diode drop. Just like when you measure across an LED, at some point, once it's conducting good, the voltage doesn't rise across it anymore. And uh, so we got it all the way up. So that's the main thing. We need at least 0.7 volts, and then uh, that gets the current going from collector to emitter. That's why the LED is lit up. And uh, you don't have to worry about it going above about 0.7 volts after that time. So I'm going to turn this way down, and now we get to about 0.7 volts again. And now it is dropping. So that's the base to emitter. Now let's look at what's going on with the collector to emitter. So there you can see that uh, we don't quite have 5 volts. Each square is 1 volt. We have the 5 volts there. That's because we have the LED. So it's dropping about 0.7 volts approximately. If I just put the uh, resistor there, there you can see now we got 5 volts. So it's taking away some of the voltage, but uh, it's not going to ruin what we're going to look at, so we'll put the LED back because we can see the LED light up when current goes through. So now we're across the uh, collector, top pin, and the emitter there, our second voltage, and that is what is going, controlling the load, I should say. So we have all the voltage across the transistor for the most part, and then because the LED is blocking a little bit, but uh, all that's left. Is there so now we're getting up and you can see that uh, we have wiggle room down here as we saw before it took about 0.7 volts before the LED lit up 
So we have that once we get to about that point. Now you can see the voltage is dropping across the transistor. It's becoming like a piece of wire. So now we're pretty much saturated there. I think it would be safe to say. We're getting a little bit more current there. But uh, there is practically no voltage across the uh, transistor. There practically none here until we get to uh, all the way down to about there. So we're putting a little bit of current from base to emitter. It's allowing a lot more current to go through the LED. So right now, if I go all the way down, the transistor is fully off. That's called cutoff. There's no base to emitter current. So there is no current being allowed from collector to emitter. So it's got that full voltage across it other than what the LED is dropping. And if I turn the trim pot up, we get to about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. Let's not go uh, that far. Now it's in what's called the active region. So we don't have the full voltage across the transistor and we're not down to uh, nothing. We're somewhere in the middle. So that's the active region. You can see the LED is uh, faintly glowing and the uh, less voltage that uh, the transistor has across it will mean there's more voltage across the resistor and LED and thus less current. So or more current I mean. So less voltage across the transistor, more across the load, more current. That's why we're across the transistor now. There's no voltage and the LED is not getting brighter even as I turn the trim pot. But if I turn it down then uh, I think we're out of the active region now. Yep, uh, pretty much. Yeah. So that is cut off. Transistor is not conducting at all. Active region it's conducting a bit and then we got saturation. The uh, transistor is conducting as well as it can. So in any case that's looking at the voltage across the transistor. That comes up a lot when you're studying transistors. So hopefully it makes more sense. Now it takes a little while to uh, grasp that concept so don't feel bad if it doesn't yet. But if it does that's uh, great. And by the way the setup I have it'll work a bit down to uh, 2 volts. Not great, but uh, it does work because as we saw before, the LED does block about 2 volts. So I'm going to turn the lamp off and uh, you can see that uh, we got the same thing, but it's not as uh, dramatic right there. We can also raise the supply to 12 volts because it's a 1 kilo ohm resistor protecting the LED. And uh, so 12 volts is still within the safe limit. We got 10 milliamps. That's because the LED is on right now. And uh, there we go. We got the uh, transistor off. I do have to uh, adjust this though. It's one volt per division. If I'm going to do this, turn the dial, I think that way, yep, to the left. Now it's two volts per division. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and about a half because we got about a volt and a half that the LED is dropping. But uh, we got the same same thing. Transistor's fully off. We're gonna go to the active region. And uh, there we go, active region. It's uh, conducting a bit, but not fully in the active region, which I fell out of, there we go. And now there's the point where it is saturated at 12 volts. So it's gonna be lower because we're dealing with more voltage, more currents going from base to emitter. So it's gonna let more current go from collector to emitter. So. Hope that all made sense. Thanks for sticking around this long. Uh, check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell. Check out the links down below in the description. All of them would help, especially the Patreon one. Donate if you can. That would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.